customers uh, it's mark 7r essentially what we're going to do today is just go through the dyno process cars on the dyno for basically the main reason being the fact that he's opted for a inlet manifold he's also had a baffled sump fitted billet sump but essentially the dyno work today is just to see how the car behaves with the new inlet manifold obviously the stock inlet manifold has flaps in the in the runners down to the cylinder head this obviously hasn't got those fitted we've still retained the original deflector plates in the head modified to make this this inlet manifold fit and essentially all we're going to do is just test it see how it is we're going to log the car on the dyno do a few runs and then obviously if the, if the tune needs to be suited which it more than likely will be for this car then we'll just adapt that and just keep dyno in it and make sure everything's as it should be but obviously we've got the car strapped in at the front we just keep it side to side just to stop the car from trying to veer off side to side obviously it's quite a stage three car so it's fairly powerful um last thing you want is the car being unstable on the dyno especially at, at the speeds that you're going to obtain in for at the end of a fourth gear pull back of the car it's just on both sides suspension arms and then there's a center strap just to stop the car from trying to lunge forward and that's it really we're just going to log, log the car make sure everything's as it should be see what it does and go from there so we're in the car we're all strapped in possibly the worst possible camera angle of me i'd imagine especially on that lens i mean you do need it for this nose but carry on but i mean basically we're in the car we're all strapped in the fans are on so we've got one extractor fan at the back just to stop me from getting a massive headache from all the fumes and then we've got our front centrifugal fan golf r's luckily have got massive grills in the front of the lower bumper so air directly straight into the intercooler whilst we're doing doing runs so the charge temps especially with an uprated cooler are a lot lower and they're very very close or as close as you can be uh, to a road situation which is ideal for obviously dyno in a car and making sure the figures and making sure it's doing what it's supposed to do are all accurate we've obviously got Vagcom set up ready to go dyno controllers ready to go so in a minute once the car's a little bit warm we're going to sink the car at 4,000 revs uh, sorry three and a half thousand revs in fourth gear uh, the reason it's fourth gear is because in this particular car it's the closest to a one-to-one -one ratio so obviously you've just got to use a little bit of initiative when it comes to dyno in different cars especially when it comes to like your BMW ZF gearboxes that are 8 speed and then you've got obviously the DQ381 which is a 7 speed slightly closer ratio than the DQ250 so you've just got to be mindful as to as to how many gears the car's got how close the ratios are then you can make a, a, a rough estimate as such as to what gear you need to be in to do a proper accurate pull usually fourth or fifth fifth mainly in the BMW side of stuff fourth in the DQ250s and then again depending on um, what sort of software is in the box I mean that doesn't change the ratios, ratios as such but usually it's it's fourth again for the DQ381s and things like that and the DQ500s and the RS3 so essentially we're just going to sink it get it as close as three and a half as we, as we can capture that with the dyno so the dyno knows what sort of RPM we're at and then um, after the after it's synced let, make sure it's warm make sure everything's sweet and then do a pull make sure it's doing what it's meant to do the dyno is basically holding the car at three and a half thousand revs when you do it so you have a dial on this on this uh, controller and I can basically set the car to not go any further and have a have a fair amount of load on the car at three and a half thousand so it gives me an accurate representation the dyno does that by just retarding the, the rollers and holding that resistance whilst I capture that RPM once I've done that which I have just done I'll let the car roll down again at the minute we're sat at 2000 RPM in fourth gear with no no load on the car at all and we're just waiting for the oil temperature to come up as soon as that's up we'll get back and we'll do some pulls so obviously the car's up to temperature now so the oil's at a fairly um, substantial operating temperature so we're just going to basically go in to VAGCOM and just make sure that the cams are doing what they're supposed to do basically you've got um, two solenoids in the end of the cams sorry a solenoid per cam in the end and then you've got a magnet that that uses the reference points just to make sure that the cams are adjusting as, the, as they should be. Usually when there's a discrepancy with the cams, you can see on this log, um, so basically the, the requested angle of the intake cam is the specified angle, so 15 degrees. Obviously the exhaust cam's just sat happy at the minute, um, but then obviously you've got the actual value as well. Usually if there's an issue, I mean, we've had a couple of cars that have had that, that bad, sorry, that badly damaged worn or 
um, potentially damaged magnets and valves that the that, that 15 degrees is just unobtainable and they end up misfiring and running running lumpy on idle. Whereas this car at the minute, I mean, if I rev the car, the values do change. At the minute, we're sat happy, so I'm more than happy to, to basically carry on because I'm happy with the fact that the cam magnets are doing what they're supposed to do. That's one of the main things to check pre-dyno on a Golf R, essentially, just because of this engine layout. Um, and then we go back to essentially what the, the screen that you may have seen whilst we're getting the car warm, which is just a generic log as such. Use the word generic quite loosely, to be fair. Um, so we look at engine RPM for every single log, just so we, we've got a reference point. And on this particular log, we've got a throttle angle, so I need to know whether the car car's ECU is actually shutting the throttle for whatever reason. And then we've got four all four cylinders of um, ignition timing retard, otherwise known as NOC. Obviously, the, in an ideal world, in a perfect world, we want them to stay at zero. On a stage three car, depending on fuel, plugs, a number, there's a whole host of things that can affect this, but obviously ideally we want to be at zero. Then obviously we've got the two charge air pressures, so that's boost. So you've got a specified what the ECU is actually requesting, and then you've got what the, the car is actually managing to achieve. And then you've got a general ignition timing on cylinder one, so that's how much ignition advance it's putting into the engine itself. And then obviously you've got your short term trims, so that's adjusting uh, based on the lambda actual value as to whether it needs to pull fuel out or put fuel in. And then obviously you've got your two lambdas, so your specified lambda, what your, what your, your ECU is trying to achieve, and then what it's actually trying to achieve is the actual value there. So now that we're warm, oil's up there, let's get some logs. So we've done a pull, just a base pull, uh, just to give us some data. All of it's been put into an Excel document. I've got rid of timestamps because we don't need those. But the, the points that I was talking about previously when you saw on the VCDS screen have all been put into this data log here. So I'm just going to group all this up, put it into a graph that I can I can read a little bit easier. And then at least that gives us some information there. So like I said, with um, every single log, all of it's based on engine RPM. So we've got a RPM trace there. Obviously, that's the end of the run at 7,000 revs. So essentially, that's just giving me a reference point as to what everything else is doing. So if I get rid of that, we're left with a throttle valve. So again, in an ideal world, you want the throttle as, as open as it can be for as long as possible. Obviously in this particular car with this particular tune, it's exactly where it should be. It's at 86.7% open, which is virtually fully open. Um, and that's, as you can see, flat across the, the whole run. The next line is your fuel trims. So this car's pulling out about 10, 11%, which is to be expected with a car on meth. And again, that's just in reference to the Lambda. It's just trying to, trying to correct it. But obviously when you bring meth into the mix, you end up with fuel trims trying to bring out a little bit more fuel because it runs a little bit more rich. Then obviously you've got your ignition line. So this is the amount of ignition timing that the car is trying to run. The peak of the run, it's running. It's only running six degrees. But again, that line ideally is just going to be flat. There's a little dip there, and that will more than likely be related to boost or something like that, just to pull a little bit out to keep itself happy. And then obviously you've got your boost. So the blue line is just your boost request, like we said. So this particular car is asking for the ECU is actually asking for 2.1 bar, and we are more or less achieving that give or take 0.05 bar. So again, that's flat, which is exactly what we want to see in this um, in this instance. There's a minor bit of knock there, nothing to be too worried about. So the car is actually trying to pull out a minuscule amount of time in 0.75, which is nothing to be worried about. Like I said previously, with a stage three car, minuscule pull like this is to be expected, and that actually tells me of all four cylinders. So as you can see, the rest of it's minuscule, and then we're basically get the lambda line so the car is actually asking for 0.82 lambda uh, it's doing 0 0.81 0 0.8 and then brings itself back into the into into check as such and again that's based on the short-term trims making sure everything's as it should be so the lambda then follows the the requested line and then essentially that is the bulk of a base log for a car that um, we just basically want to do tests on so uh, we'll go from there probably um, send the logs off uh, get the calibrator to have a look at it and then we'll um, potentially change the tune and try and make it a bit better with the manifold that's on it. So we've just done the dyno runs, we've got two runs. We basically just did two separate runs because there's different things that I need to log whilst we're doing development for the manifold that's now on the car. Because obviously the car was running absolutely perfectly in its original form, obviously with the stage three kit, but with a stock inlet manifold. But obviously you just need to bear in mind that a fair amount of things change when you start putting different inlet manifolds on, uh, obviously with no flaps and stuff like that. So we just, that's the bulk of today was to just get some logs, see how that inlet manifold performs. It seems to perform fairly well 
as it is. But like I said, we are gonna look at the logs in a little bit more detail, and then we're gonna go through and see where there's improvements to be made for that manifold, see what it's capable of, and then see if there's anything more that the car can give us. But obviously at the minute, everything's just development. Uh, it's an unknown manifold to us. Bolted on, it's actually gone on fairly nicely. All the logging looks happy-wise, so we just need to go through all that, see if there's anything that can be had out of the car with that manifold on, and then compare it to, to a stock manifold, see what the logs are like. So we'll go from there. Oh, my God.